All right, let's get started. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining this SaltStack webinar this morning. Again, this is Rhett Glauser with SaltStack. A couple housekeeping items before we get started. We are recording this webinar, and we'll make the recording available to all registered attendees uh, uh, probably within about 24 hours uh, after uh, we wrap up the, the webinar this morning. Uh, also, keep in mind, we would love to answer any questions you have, uh, but to preserve the quality of the, the webinar recording, uh, we have muted all lines. If you do have questions, please enter them into the uh, chat function uh, within the uh, GoToMeeting uh, panel. Um, right now, you should be seeing uh, Dave Boucher. Uh, Dave is a senior salt, uh, uh, salt stack uh, software engineer. Uh, he'll be uh, delivering the, the bulk of the, the uh, presentation and the demo um, uh, on this webinar today. Uh, you should see his face and, and his slides there. Um, and again, I'll just uh, I'll be helping to moderate this webinar, and uh, so I think we can we can jump right in. Um, Dave, if you don't mind going to the next slide, we'll we'll get started, and um, I'll provide just a quick uh, intro here. If you're new to the SALT uh, project, I assume most are, are, are rather familiar uh, with, with SALT Stack, but uh, um, we, we want to not make any assumptions here. I mean, the, the SALT is a, is a large software, open source software project. Uh, it's big and getting bitter, bigger. Just to give, put things into perspective a little bit, we've had three of these releases over the last year. Um, Boron being the latest uh, of three within this last year. Um, in, in that year, you can see there we've had more than 2 million lines of code committed um, and um, it's almost 18,000 uh, actual commits. Uh, it's a large, healthy, uh, active, and, and, and very vibrant uh, project. And um, Dave, if you don't mind going to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about why. Um, you know, Salt was initially created uh, as a, a remote execution uh, software platform. Um, our technical founder, Thomas Hatch, uh, had been using other systems management tools that didn't quite uh, meet the, the level of, of scale and speed that he required in his, his day job, so he wrote Salt. Uh, today, Salt is not just remote execution. Uh, it's not just configuration management. Uh, but SALT also does uh, cloud control, and we'll talk quite a bit today about how SALT does event-driven orchestration. Now, again, if you're new to SALT, um, uh, you'll, you'll quickly understand that kind of the, the default mode of SALT is that you've got a master that controls your minions uh, that run out on various systems uh, within your data center. Uh, Dave will talk about some of those systems and what they can be. Um, um, SALT addresses very heter heterogeneous environments. Um, that, that typical agent uh, uh, mode uh, can also, um, we can also run in an agentless manner, so through what we call SALT SSH uh, for, uh, for certain use cases. Uh, that uh, can be uh, a beneficial approach uh, for, for various environments and use cases. Um, and so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about, about that, and you'll see in some of the highlights of this release. But um, let's jump right into why you're all here today. Um, I want to get into the meat of the presentation and hand over the reins to Dave and, and talk specifically about uh, what we've delivered in the Boron release uh, of SALT. So Dave, take it away. All right. Thanks a lot, Rhett. I'm um, excited to be here today. Um, so jumping right in, uh, I'm just going to talk about some of the features and uh, updates that have uh, happened to SALT for the Boron release. Um, a big one was an update to the SALT Syndic. So SALT Syndic allows you to set up a, uh, a tiered uh, multi-master environment where you have a higher level master that sends commands through lower, lower level masters. Um, we uh, revamped um, how some of the communication works. so. Um, it's much more reliable and also quite a bit faster. We found some um, parts in the code that were kind of setting up a bottleneck. Um, so the Salt Syndic is much more reliable in this Boron release. So if you are using the Salt Syndic, I highly recommend um, uh, testing and then upgrading to uh, this 2016.3 Boron release. Um, also seen quite a, few, quite a few more improvements in um, the proxy minion interface. Um, a proxy minion, if you're not familiar, is a 
an interface that allows you to have salt control uh, things that normally can't run um, a salt minion uh, agent. So things like uh, certain network switches, um, dumb devices, you know, anything that uh, normally you can connect to, um, even like REST APIs and things like that. Um, in fact, I'm going to be doing a demo um, today using the uh, Hue lighting uh, uh, proxy menu. So Hue lights are uh, these LED lights that can control through the API. I'm going to show how you can use Salt to uh, control those or, or interact, those, in, interact with those. So the, the proxy minions, again, um, uh, there's been updates to, to allow for um, faster um, and better distribution of your proxy menu modules, um, as well as a lot of uh, functionality additions as well. Um, as, a, as a highly uh, requested feature uh, where you can set a minion to be in a blackout mode. So, for example, we had a customer that during tax season, um, for several days in particular, uh, they didn't want any commands being run uh, on their minions um, in case of any automated or um, accidental uh, things. And so um, you, can set, you can put a setting in the pillar data for a minion to uh, have the minion ignore any commands sent to it. Um, you can also set up a whitelist so you can so you can have, have you know two or three commands that you do want to allow during that blackout period. So that way, if you have a you know a window where you do not want anything being done to your to your, to your minions, uh, this minion blackout uh, functionality will allow you to to do that. Um, we've greatly increased um, our platform support. Um, we've added um, a whole slew of modules for Mac OS, Windows. Um, uh, packages for new versions of Ubuntu, Solaris, as well as for the Raspberry Pi. Um, Shane Lee has added, uh, like I said, a large number of uh, uh, modules and bits of functionality for, especially for Mac OS and Windows. Um, and so we're increasingly uh, growing uh, support uh, across a wide variety of operating systems. Um, we've also added uh, new modules for um, our Salt Cloud support. So we, we've added a support for Open Nebula, Dimension Data, um, as well as many new AWS uh, features. Uh, I think that brings us up to 27 or 28 um, cloud types that uh, Salt supports, both public clouds and private clouds. Um, and uh, so again, um, our cloud support just continues to grow. And uh, uh, we have support for pretty much anything you've heard of. We, we support it now. Um, again, we've, we've added a whole variety of modules. Not really too many to just list here. Um, but uh, we have such a large um, open source community that's working with us hand in hand every day to uh, improve and add uh, to our modules. Um, it really increases our salts capabilities uh, every day. Um, like I mentioned, we've done a lot of work with Windows, and uh, we've um, uh, partnered with Microsoft as well, and working on uh, Windows desired state configuration support. So this is still um, uh, kind of an alpha stage uh, experimental, although it is usable. And uh, we're combining the best of uh, Windows DSC and Salt. So. When using Salt with DSC, you can use all the speed, the orchestration, um, the fast distribution of files um, to distribute your DSC um, configurations. And that also allows you to um, simplify your DSC modules because you don't have to worry about the executing commands or um, the uh, or orchestration of, of these commands. You basically, you can, you can write your DSC modules as if you were just executing it locally on whichever Windows machine you're on. Um, you can also templatize those files, pass in variables, a uh, whole variety of things like that. So you can take your current uh, DSC modules that you've already written and uh, have Salt uh, execute those for you and, and run those and orchestrate those. Um, and uh, we're really excited to see uh, people's um, response to that, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll be continuing to add functionality um, as, we, as we go along. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, we've also uh, been working heavily on event-driven automation and uh, having an intelligent event-driven automation. 
So uh, Salt has had event-driven automation um, for uh, several years now. And um, event-driven automation allows you to um, have Salt do things for you to uh, remove the need to manually uh, do things. So you can have Salt uh, make changes intelligently, um, monitor systems, and uh, take actions based on what's going on in the systems. So there's a bunch of um, pieces that Salt provides that allows you to build basically whatever you need. Um, I'm going to do a demo here um, in, in a minute that will uh, kind of show uh, kind of what you can do with this. So we have, there's two types of reactors that we have. Uh, between the Salt Master and all its minions, there's an event bus. And events are passing through constantly based on what's going on within Salt. The single event reactor, which we've had for a couple of years now, um, is very simple. Um, it's pretty easy to program, easy to, uh, to reason about, because each event that comes through, uh, we process that event and then take some action based on what that event is. So for a lot of simple use cases, um, it's a really useful thing. I've used it quite a bit um, in our own internal use of salts for uh, repos at the saltstack.com, um, as well as with many of our uh, customers that we've helped um, build out um, salt infrastructures. Um, in Boron, we have uh, a new experimental reactor. It's called the um, called Thorium. Uh, it's usable, but it is uh, in the experimental uh, mode right now. Um, it's a little harder to create, but it, it's an aggregate event reactor. So it's not quite as fast as a single event reactor. Um, and um, can be a little more complicated, but it allows you to handle complex cases. So you, instead of, oh, hey, it's on events, do something to that, we can um, uh, time you know, how many events have we had in the last you know, minute, or, or how, many, how many events have we had in the last five minutes. Um, we can uh, take sums of the of values that are coming through in the events. Um, and uh, so it allows you to do things more intelligently. So you're not just seeing the world, your installed infrastructure um, based on one event, but multiple events that are happening. And um, uh, anyway, it allows you to do more complex uh, cases. So uh, again, so right now, the reactor is battle tested um, and very fast and, and uh, used in production right now. Uh, Thorium um, allows you to do more advanced cases um, and is in kind of a uh, experimental stage right now. Um, and likely we'll have more features added to it, and the API might uh, change as we move forward. <clears throat> so here's a, this, this slide we're talking about um, is event-driven automation. So you can see here on the left-hand side we have um, everything that might be a part of our salt infrastructure. Uh, virtual machines on our own personal infrastructure, physical servers, public VMs on public clouds, uh, network devices, uh, containers, uh, Windows machines, anything that we're managing, we can all send events up through to the right to our salt master, and we can watch those watch those events and do intelligent things with that. We can watch system load. Um, we can watch you know a whole variety of things um, on those on those uh, systems, and then take action accordingly. This is a very powerful paradigm, uh, so that instead of having to get paged and uh, having to go to the data center at 3 in the morning, Salt might be able to uh, fix that problem for you and just notify you that uh, a problem occurred and that um, a known action was taken to resolve that problem and it was logged in your, in your system. Uh, as part of that event uh, system, um, we have what we call Salt Beacons. Salt Beacons allow you to generate events based on things happening on your infrastructure. Um, ones we've had in the past already are um, uh, 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 disk usage, load, um, various things like that. We've got a new uh, an Android debug bridge uh, beacon, uh, memory usage beacon, a network settings beacon, um, and these all allow you to set thresholds and, and watch specific things on your systems um, and send events to the salt master across the event bus based on what's going on in those beacons. Uh, so I'm going to do a demo now, and uh, I'm going to explain what's going on with this demo and uh, and run this. And this is all live, um, so this is not a canned 
presentation. Um, so let's, let's jump in. So, so first of all, um, I have written a state uh, that will install the Apache web server. You can see here um, we have Apache 2. Uh, package installed is the state that we're going to uh, run. And then I've added a flag here to this state that's going to um, fire an event on the event bus um, and give you the, the return data about that state. And so I'm going to introduce an error here. So I'm going to intentionally misspell um, the package. And uh, so we'll save that. Um, so we're going to run and execute that in a moment. Now, once I run that, it's going to fail because the Apache game, the package is, is incorrect, and uh, that's going to send an event on the event bus. Now, I'm going to have a reactor. Again, this is a simple um, one event reactor uh, configured that will allow us, allow me to do something. So I'll show you what that configuration looks like. So in the master.d directory, I have a, 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 a dot .com file with my configuration here. So we have the reactor section stands up. Um, <clears throat> this first line is the target. So the event is going to have a tag, a salt, state result. A, I have an asterisk here, so it'll match. Um, and then in this segment would be the job ID. Um, and then this is the name of the minion, and then any result. And then whenever it sees a state result from uh, this minion named Hue demo, it's going to execute this Hue.sls uh, reactor. So let's see what that looks like. <clears throat> okay, so here at the top, uh, I'm, going, I'm using Jinja to uh, set a couple, two, uh, actually one value based on the result. So inside the Jinja, Jinja context, um, there's a tag variable and a data variable. So the tag variable will have the tag of the event that we're processing, and uh, data will have the entire data uh, structure that was sent along with uh, that event. So we're going to check in the return uh, field, return uh, dictionary for the result field, and we're checking if it's true. If it's true. We're going to set the variable my color to green, and otherwise we're going to set the my color variable to red. So once we've, once we've set these uh, variables here in uh, in Jinja, uh, then we're going to execute a command on um, a proxy minion that's connected to this Hue LED lighting system. So uh, here's the name of the stanza that I've, that I've assigned it. I'm going to execute. Uh, the hue.color execution module. Uh, I'm going to target Huey. Huey is the name of the proxy minion uh, that we're using here. And we're going to assign the color to the color of above, either green or red. And uh, the ID of, this is the ID of the light bulb. So I have, I have three uh, LED light bulbs on my the system here. I'm just going to uh, do number one here. Um, so Again, um, I'm going to execute the the uh, this, that salt state, um, and then based on its result, uh, it's going to send an event up on the event bus. The reactor is going to see that event and execute what you're seeing right now, which is um, change the color of uh, this LED uh, light bulb, um, and, uh, and then we'll see that result. So if you look here. I have three minions on this, connected to this master. Um, Hue demo is a uh, is the minion we're going to install um, Apache on, and uh, Huey is the proxy minion that we're going that that controls the lights. So if you look here, I have this lamp. Kind of stick that right there. You can see right now it's just a kind of a regular uh, color that we're um, 
and here we're going to apply this uh, Apache state here. So um, to do that, we would do salt to demo, which is the name of the minion, state to SLS Apache simple. So we're going to execute that. And we get the result back. You can see here that it had a problem because the, um, it was unable to locate the S Apache 2 uh, uh, package because it that doesn't exist. There's a misspelling, and the lamp turned red. So let's say I had kind of a long running, running salt state, and just was sitting at my desk. I was off doing something else. Uh, this light could come on, and, then, and I could say, hey, um, I would know immediately that something was wrong. So again, this was all based on the events that are passing on this event bus. So let's go in and fix that problem. And I realized, oh, okay, I had an error. I don't know how that passed. That, that help, I don't know how that made it through our strict code review process. And I'm going to run that again. And you can see here, the um, it did find the correct package, it's already installed, and the light turned green, and um, everything's happy. So, um, again, Salt provides thousands of building blocks that allow you to build an event-driven infrastructure that matches what you need on your infrastructure. So, maybe a few light doesn't really make sense with what you're doing, um, but you can do other things like spin up new VMs on Rackspace or AWS, uh, modify configuration files, update your load balancer, a um, whole variety of things you can do based off of this event-driven ar 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 architecture um, and, uh, and build powerful workflows and uh, really uh, you know, effective uh, tooling um, for what you need to do. And not just what we dream up, but what the the problems that you are solving um, on your infrastructure. So anyway, that's just kind of a little taste of um, event-driven automation, um, and I'm uh, really re excited about the, the power and the things people are building with these events. Um, so uh, to get started with Salt, if you go to docs.salts.com, um, that's where uh, all of our, our documentation sits. Um, there's events held all around the world um, every week. If you go to salsapp.com slash events, uh, you can see um, all the things we're involved with. Um, so, Red, do we have any questions that we wanted to answer? Yeah, so just as a reminder to everybody, if you do have any questions about any of these uh, new features, about the demo that Dave just ran, uh, please make sure to enter those into the chat function and go to meeting, and we'd be happy to address them here on the webinar, or um, if we get them a little late, we'll be sure to respond to you in person. Um, but yeah, as uh, thank you, Dave, for for providing those highlights and actually showing a couple of them in action with uh, you know, the combination of the, the power of the, the proxy minion to address all types of uh, devices, not just you know the, the, the Linux-based servers in your data center, uh, but everything to um, uh, something as as fringe as a uh, Philips Hue light bulb uh, through the po proxy minion. Uh, it's also good to see some of that event-driven automation uh, that uh, is so unique to, to SaltStack. And uh, obviously, there's we're seeing a lot of uptake uh, from our customers and users in terms of use cases uh, that uh, are uh, enabled through the event-driven power of, of Salt. But um, yeah, it is it is you know very easy to get started with Salt. You know, we talked about how we've got both the Salt SSH mode as well as the traditional master minion mode. Um, if you're new to Salt please go to docs.salsac.com. Uh, you'll be pointed to um, many, many uh, tutorials. And if you haven't visited our docs in, in a while, um, you'll be, I think, happily uh, surprised with some of the updates that have uh, been made there to, to make uh, adoption and implementation of SALT even easier. Um, and then, yeah, it's very easy to connect with us, uh, whether it's through local meetups. Um, 
uh, also uh, keep in mind, you know, if you are just trying to get your head around SALT, we, we, are, we do have this webinar series. It's we, the best of SALTConf 16. We're taking the best talks from our recent uh, user conference, and uh, we're, we're turning those into webinar format for folks that couldn't attend. Uh, our next one is next week. It's Drew Malone from Cloudera. Um, he talks about, he's been using salt for like three or four years and he talks about all the different things you can do with salt beyond just configuration management. Many of those that Dave touched on today, so we can go into more detail. D Drew will go into more detail, uh, on, on some of the topics that Dave covered here today. Um, so as I've been, uh, jabbering, we've, we've had a couple of, uh, comments, uh, come into chat. Um, one, Dave, where I think there's some interest in seeing the uh, Hue SLS file posted somewhere. Is that something you can accommodate? Yeah, absolutely, yep. In fact, I'm going to be updating some of the documentation as well to make it a little clearer and how to set it up and everything. So, yeah, we'll, I'll definitely post that soon. Okay. All right, very good. And then uh, let's see. We, we just have uh, another comment come in just saying, nice demo, um, taking it all in. And uh, we got looks like a new user to Salt, and uh, he's just updated. Uh, got got about 50 Linux hosts under management with Salt, so good. That's we love to hear it. We want to see people successful with Salt. And like I said, we've uh, we're providing this webinar. We're providing you know all the documentation that's out there uh, to to make your uh, uh, your environments easier to manage. Uh, uh, that's that's the whole idea behind Salt. So um, with that. Uh, I think I don't see any other questions. You know how to get in touch with us. Um, there are, you know, just send us a, a note to sales at, at saltstack.com. We can get you in touch with uh, the right person within the organization that can answer any questions you might have. If you want to get a kind of a higher level uh, introduction to the salt architecture, we've got um, um, a presentation that we'd be happy to do that with. We can, provide, we can answer any of your specific questions to your environment or your needs. Um, so reach out, let us know uh, how we can help. Uh, thank you for joining this, this Salt Stack webinar. Like I said, we will be posting this recording to um, uh, the Salt Stack YouTube channel, and we'll make that uh, unique URL available to everybody who's registered uh, for this webinar within about 24 hours. Uh, so Dave, thank you for, uh, for running this presentation and for the demo. Thank you to everybody for joining today. And uh, we will be in touch.